Hey guys, welcome to a special Oscars panel edition of Film Talk Fridays on Mondays. I'm your host, Joey Katz, and with me we have a guest who, if you've stuck around since the beginning of Film Talk Fridays, you might recognize him from a couple films, uh, like Sexbot. Sex. Everyone, everyone's favorite. I mean, I loved it. Um, but yeah, we have Harry Hulk here. Hello. To talk about the Oscars. So yeah, should we uh, get right to it? Please, right. lead. This episode's been two weeks in the waiting. Because we, we Has have it to, been two weeks? Yeah. God, it feels like yeah. months. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. I'm trying to, but we have to, we've had to mull over our thoughts for that long, because that's, it's like a fine cheese or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, just right away, what were your like initial thoughts of the Oscars? Like, um, when it ended at what, fucking 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, like, safe oh as God. fuck. Oh my Honestly. God. Honestly. I mean, I, I mean, just even going back to January and reading those nominations, you know, it, it, it just made me so sad in a way because like 2014 was such an exciting overall year for film. And then you read that films like The Imitation Game and yeah. The Theory of Everything and American Sniper like dominating all of these categories when it's like films like these are made every fucking year. Yeah, I mean, like, like it's so awesome. I was I was surprised Unbroken wasn't in there because that's like yeah, well, you, you can want. tell you can tell they want it to be yeah. in there. Yeah, it's interesting because like there's stuff like you did you ever see The Butler? No, so bad. Um, but it's interesting because like that was like an Oscar bait thing. Oh, definitely. But it didn't get nominated for anything. Not one. But like um, it's wait, interesting really not like one? not not one. Yeah, it, like yeah, the ones that matter at least. I don't think it did, but um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. Like the ones, like the ones that want to get the Oscars like really badly don't get the nomination sometimes, but sometimes they do. Because I mean, like, well, I think I, I think a lot of these films sometimes uh, fall down to too much of uh, of, of me seek syndrome. Yeah. Right? You've seen this. Rick and Morty with yeah, Mr. Yeah. Me, like, look at me! Yeah. Like, I feel like you have films like The Butler yeah. or or um, or Unbroken. And, you know, every year you're going to have a couple of those come out where it's yeah. just, you can so tell that there's only one thing on these producers' minds, yeah. and it's being up on that stage come late February to accept an award. Yeah, which um, they didn't, thankfully. I didn't see Unbroken. No, not The trailer looked kind of cool. I'm like, eh, but like, I feel like I, I know exactly. But um, whatever. but I mean, Birdman won Best Picture. Yeah, that that was um, actually a pretty big surprise. I thought. Really? Did you? In a way, a yes and no. I mean, like I think it was a fifty-fifty thing, like Birdman or Boyhood. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was so I mean, back in August. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw Boyhood back in July, and then come yeah. August, I was just so dead set on the idea of, you know, Linklater has got this in the bag. Yeah. He's got that best picture. Like I, I can't remember the last time I saw something and and so immediately thought of like how deserving that it was. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah. but then Birdman started picking up toward the end of awards season. Yeah. It, it, um, it went on to win the SAG, the DGA. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because like, um, what was twenty twelve? I think that was the year where Argo. Yeah, won. Uh, that's when Argo. Because everyone was like, oh, like Lincoln or something's gonna win, which I would really. Yeah, I, I, like, I, I, re I, that, I like, love Lincoln so much. Oh no, me but too. like, but that's Argo, like everyone's like. Um, let me just see. Oh, we don't have Wi-Fi down here. <laughs> whatever. Let's just say Lincoln was like a top contender or whatever. Um, but Argo started winning like Golden Globes and like some like a couple of big awards towards. Like like a week or two before Oscars week, so people were like, "Oh, maybe Argo's gonna win." I'm like, "Nah, I can't. It's not the better movie." Like, I just didn't think it was a better movie, but it did, and I was like, oh, this "I actually, I actually felt, I felt Argo was pretty on point to win it because, like, once it won the Golden Globe, that's when I think I feel yeah. it kind of set in that you know, because like that, that's what you get. You got to pay attention to the Golden Globes first because that's really what sets in a lot of." the patterns of what we're going to see for the rest of award season to come because that's like the first big one that a lot of people pay attention to. Yeah, I, I kind of wish there wasn't a pattern. You know, like, because like, I, I remember the 83rd Oscars. That was the one where King's Speech, Natalie Portman, right. Christian Bale. Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Was that Jeff Bridges? Yeah, he won for Crazy Heart. I thought... Oh no, wait, no, 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 that no, was no. the year. Fuck, that was the no. year before. That was no, okay. that was Colin Firth. Wait, yeah, King's Colin Speech. Firth. Yeah. yeah, but that but the thing about that year, the eighty third Oscars, was that everything was so predictable, from like months before. 
Mm -hmm. Like in all the magazines, everyone's like, "This person's yeah, gonna you, wait." You really don't, don't get talk the about safer it. than the King's Speech. And like King's Speech, I mean, I'm not Natalie, saying it's a bad yeah, film. I yeah. really dig the King's Speech. Yeah, but like King's Speech won, Natalie Portman won, Christian Bale won. I remember everyone's like, "Melissa Leo's gonna win for everything like that." Um, and like, yeah, it was really a safe Oscar. But I think also. I think but, what separates I think what separates um, what separates like this year's Oscars in terms of because um, you know we had usually every year with Oscars there's that like 50-50 with the best picture yeah like 2007 we had it was down to there will be blood versus no country for old men uh, I really think 2009 it was one. down to like Avatar versus Hurt Locker was that the year District 9 was nominated? yeah oh, yeah 2010 really it came down to Social Network versus King's Speech and yeah. this year while it was Birdman and Boyhood we didn't have that last year when 12 Years a Slave won yeah because Right from the get-go, when 12 Years a Slave premiered, I think it was Toronto, like, every major critic had already declared the best picture winner. Yeah. I think, like, alright, 12 Years a Slave is an awesome movie. And I think, like, Steve McQueen is very visceral, like, in-your-face director. He's like, this is the reality I think he's of definitely thing. one of the best new talents to look out for. Yeah. Um, he has a show coming out. No way. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Or, no, maybe it's, yeah, he does have one. And I think, and John Ridley has show out now and he wrote 12 years of slave but um i feel like they're like oh we'll vote for 12. like there were people that didn't see it but they voted for it anyway yeah when, yeah but yeah when the hollywood reporter had had those anonymous interviews yeah. there were all those people talking about like oh well, i didn't see 12 years yeah. of slave but i voted for it yeah. anyway but it's really interesting i thought chihuahua the legion four should have won best actor mcconaughey i feel like really? mcconaughey's oscar was like we're just talking about not this Oscars at all. <laughs> yeah, but, I know, we're like so on last year. <laughs> but it still bothers me. Because like the thing like Matthew McConaughey, it was like, oh, it's like sort of like the, the icing on the cake. Like, oh, you rebounded and you're really a, like a notable actor now. Like, here's your reward for that. I thought Threat to Lead You For was a lot better. Um, but I think the 12 Years of Slave um, award is interesting because it's like they gave the award to it, like you know, to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's like the next year, it's the whitest Oscars ever. <laughs> it's like it's so weird because I feel like I feel like right. they were like, oh, we gave the award to like African Americans. Like, okay, like are we cool now? Let's go back to being old white men. It was really strange because like, and did you notice like they kept cutting back to like Oprah a lot, and like yeah, they, they yeah. like used like Octavia Spencer as like that like. It was weird the way they use Oprah and Octavia Spencer throughout the entire Oscars. It's like, see, look at all these, like, look at all this diversity. It's like, please don't hate us. It was so weird. I, I just felt like it was very awkward. And I mean, of course, like the 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 lack of David Oyelowo. Oyelowo. Yeah, no, that yeah. was that was such a fucking sham. <laughs> yeah, he was because great. ah, like. Selma just shook me so much to my fucking core. Yeah, interesting. And 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 for them to 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 not only give it to not only not give it a, at least a nod to to o Yellow, but to like to again like put like Cumberbatch in there. Yeah, I mean like I mean Imitation Game is a really it's a really good movie. It's not a really great movie. It's not a great movie. I think it's a really good movie, but it's so. It's. It, I mean, like with a lot of these movies, it sort of plays into the. the it just pay, the, it just plays formula. into so much of what all those old white yeah. farts love. And I mean, like World yeah. War Two, um, like um, like the 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 identity crisis. Identity like, crisis. I don't know, man going against the institution. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's so it's so expected. Like I don't. Know. I did. The only one I didn't see was Theory of Everything. So I mean I can't really say that Eddie Redmayne's Oscar is undeserved, but I mean yeah I'm, I, I'm I can say same, Bradley Cooper same boat I can say Bradley Cooper's nomination is undeserved. I would have taken Cooper out too. Yeah, um, I mean you could have taken someone out and put someone in for like there's a lot of you know choice what? for Eddie. I would I would have if it were up to me, and I mean it should be. Let's make that clear. <laughs> he should an actor. absolutely be up to me. <laughs> all of this, all of but. Um, I could leave. This would be good. <laughs> um, but I would have taken out Cumberbatch, uh, Cabbage Patch, uh, is, if that's how you pronounce um, yeah, it, and, and Cooper, and I would have put in Oyello and uh, Gyllenhaal. Real, oh, yeah. I would have taken out, I was, I, would, I was surprised they didn't put in 
Philip Seymour Hoffman. For, for like a posthumous like most want a most wanted man. Oh, he was amazing. I mean, yeah, he was great in that. I, I thought I, mean, I, 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 I think I think the categories were a bit too crowded. Yeah, um, I don't that. know, but I I was surprised that they didn't like give him like a posthumous yeah. nomination, even if he didn't win. I'm just he, happy that his very last nomination ever was for the Master. Yeah. Alright, um, yeah, it's a good movie, but, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I also, I really wanted Steve Carell to win, because I wanted it, because I love it when comedic actors do serious roles and they do them well, yeah. like Will Ferrell, Stranger Than Fiction. Well, in the, in the beginning, oh. everybody had had him pegged to yeah. win, when Foxcatcher was premiering and all Keaton, those, at, at also. cons and stuff. Yeah, and Keaton, um, it was going to be a 50-50 with those guys. But then... Yeah, but then, but then, manipulative Oscar bait bullshit number five four eight theory of everything <laughs> came out, and and Eddie Redmayne just got on camera and just like did that, and everyone just threw Jesus gold God. at him. And, <laughs> I mean, that's I mean again, I haven't seen it, so I can't. <laughs> but, but I mean, I just I saw that I saw the trailer, and I was like, give me a break. Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I like I saw the trailer for it, and I'm like, like oh, like this is way too much. Like this is like. Too Oscar baby for the Oscars. Yeah, like, even they wouldn't stoop to it. It like, almost felt like a parody. Yeah, of like, itself. I don't know. And like, ugh. Uh, yeah, just ugh. Um, I mean, uh, the the one thing. I mean, we we should talk about Neil Patrick Harris. Oh yeah, I guess so. Because I mean, that's a thing. I felt he was very mad. Mm -hmm. It was very boring night. Really, none of the jokes really. Stuck. I was really unimpressed. The the two seconds of Jack Black at the very beginning oh. was probably the greatest thing. Oh, that was like, great. And like the two seconds of Kevin Hart were great. Kevin Hart hosted next year, or both of them hosted next year. That would be the greatest thing ever, because they're really fucking funny. Like Jack Black. Is well, have you ever seen Jack Black? Um, a couple of years ago when they had all of the comedians sing yeah. the Oscars and Jack one? Black. Yeah. yeah, Will Ferrell, Jack Black. Um, was it Zach Galifianakis? Yeah. No, 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 it wasn't him. Oh god, I'm totally blanking on who the uh, third guy was. He was probably, he was probably good. Was it Steve? No, it wasn't Steve. No. No, it wasn't. We'll, we'll, we'll be here forever if we try right. to figure it out. <laughs> but I do have a note on here that says Jack Black equals God. So I mean... Is Jack that, Black God? Tune in next week. Like, <laughs> I mean, we could just say yes, because of course. Um, but if he did host the Oscars, that would be amazing, because he's got a great voice. And Definitely. he's funny, and he's a Nacho Libre, and I think that qualifies <laughs> him to be the host, because Nacho Libre is the greatest movie. I think I'd only be okay with it, him hosting if he came on stage dressed as Nacho Libre. I want him to just come out on stage and be like, Hey guys, do you remember that film that came out like 12 years ago that none of you really remember? <laughs> the movie's, that movie's better than the point though. It's the same director. Those, no. are, those are fighting words. They are fighting yeah. words, but I'll stand by them. I'll, I'll defend Napoleon Dynamite to the death. I will with Nacho Libre. Um, yeah. yeah. There, there you go. More power to you. Thanks, but, thanks um, girl. <laughs> my money on hosting, I think, would be something along the lines of, like, Robert Downey Jr. That would be cool. I would just... That would be really cool. That would, that would actually be really awesome. Um, what if they got Val Kilmer? <laughs> just... With Val Kilmer. You know, you know what? That would that would be the most interesting thing that the Oscars have done in the past five years. He's amazing. I just saw MacGruber recently. Val Kilmer's in that. Is he? It's a really bad movie. Um, but yeah, um, I was surprised. Going back to not like the categories, um, best director. I'm surprised Richard Linklater didn't get. Yeah. 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 Um, well, because you know what? Because toward toward as Oscars as as the Oscars were approaching. And Birdman was sort of just sweeping everything up. I I I, I was pretty on the line. I was like, okay, they're definitely either going to give it to Boyhood or Birdman. And yeah. you know, even if even if uh, if Birdman wins Best Picture, you know, obviously I'd be very you know, because I, I love Birdman, but yeah. I just I love Boyhood so much more. Yeah. And but I thought I thought Linklater so had that one. Yeah, because I mean the whole the I mean like I know everyone's saying like oh the twelve years thing, like but really like having to make like cons like a visually consistent film over 12 years with the same actors and having them all arrive on set and making a, like very relatable developed characters like in the context of film it's very it's really impressive it's never been done before it's really so. incredible i mean like and it's never been done so well before have you seen the up movies like seven up 14 up those are the documentaries yeah right? i haven't it's, seen it's them sort of the same up. thing but it's separate films so uh -huh. it's every seven years this director Re-interviews these school children uh -huh. and follows them 
I mean, they don't stay school children. That's the plot line to a Simpsons episode. Yeah. Is yes. it really? Yeah, or like a documentary like comes to Springfield and they like interview them like from like kids to like the present day. Is that like actually a Simpsons episode? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's really funny. Oh, cool. But yeah, that's the. I mean, like that's the closest thing to boyhood that we've had. Um, like Morton Tildum for Imitation Game. I'm surprised Damien Chazelle, who did Whiplash. Yeah. I wanted Whiplash to win everything. I mean, that was yeah, my, no, that I was remember, my I favorite. I remember you were like yeah. over the moon for that. Oh, I, mean, I mean, I, I was too. I actually, the, it was weird because I saw the clip of Whiplash, the, the rushing or dragging the yeah. thing, yeah. Um, like five months before the movie came out. It was before they released the trailer, weirdly enough. And I saw it, it was just like in a recommended thing on YouTube, and I watched it, I'm like, what is this? And I watched it, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, really, like, this is amazing, I can't wait. So, like, I was sort of hyped for it going in, and I saw it, Jacob Burns, and it was amazing. I mean, yeah, that's where I saw it, yeah, too. It was, Not a plug-in, by the way. Is it so? What? Is it though? No, we should totally we, plug in the Jacob Burns film. Yeah, because I mean, because it's a really awesome. Because if we, because going into that, which will it will tie back into it later, uh, I think Snowpiercer should have been nominated for something, but I think it's very Korean. It's like a little too like Korean to be nominated. Yeah, no, it's 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 an American. It's no, it's a Korean film dressed up like an American film. Yeah, um, and that's gonna be playing at the Jacob Burns Center. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. That's a um, that is a problem. yeah because right. you know because uh, yeah no at its core yeah it, it, it showcased so many like elements of Korean action films that we're so used to but yeah. you've got Captain America <laughs> yeah it was really it was, and it's really inter um, like an interesting combination of different what, what would I have nominated Snowpiercer for because you yeah. know it gets pretty crowded toward the. Uh, Maybe screenplay. Wait, let's look at the screenplay nominations. Because right. I remember having a lot of problems with, with some of Adapted. those. Adapted. That was the only nomination for Inherent Vice. Yeah. No, the, the costume design. No, no, we got a costume design nomination too. That's, that's right. important. Right. Um, oh, Whiplash fell into the adapted category because of the, some sh the short insane film. Insane loophole. It's because yeah. they made a short film to show to producers for yeah. financing, to get financing. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, here you go. I, I watched it recently. It's a, it's got the J.K. Simmons is in it. So yeah, but it's got the kid from. Did you ever see Scott Pilgrim? I did. You you know the kid who plays young Neil. Uh, you'd have to jog my memory on. He's that. the one. He's the one. Um, he's like kind of like the kid in the background, and he's like, oh, I know all the songs. So he's the one. Wait, that yeah, not, yeah, not yeah, 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 the one, yeah, the yeah. the one that comes in to replace him as the bass player when, when yeah. he like leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays. Um, Miles Teller's role. Yeah. No way. It's weird, and he's not a good drummer. <laughs> Like he, I think he actually plays drums in that one, and it's like so not as good. God, I must have really pissed off Fletcher then. Yeah, it was really bad. Um, but yeah, um, there's just a lot of very meh stuff. Are we okay? We're doing that. Well, um, I mean, if we can, I guess the most excited Oscar, like the most excited I was for an Oscar win, was the film editing for some reason. I was really ex excited that Whiplash won. Yeah, I mean that's that uh, that was the one that I had that yeah. I predicted to win it. Real. I was surprised Birdman didn't get nominated for that because like the whole thing, like it the didn't. whole. I thought no, it was. The whole shtick was that it's always oh, a whole yeah. all one take and yeah. I mean I was surprised, but yeah. Um, I guess just little things. Glad American Sniper didn't get nominated, or did well, got too many nominations. Didn't, 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 get, didn't get any wins. I was happy yes. with that. Um, I was pissed off. Wait, no, it did win. Did it win uh, no. sound editing? Yes. No. Oh, oh, sorry. Are we are we done? Get oh no, no, it won sound editing. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, get, get so two there you nerds in a yeah. room. Shut up. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, last couple things. The speeches were very topical. Um, some were very good, but it's weird because like the Patricia Arquette one, like they're really like poignant, amazing speeches. Like, but the Patricia Arquette one, she's like, I felt like it was just plugging an issue for like just like that stage, like having that moment to like say a thing. I mean, like I'm all, I'm all with women equality and stuff. I'm not saying that it's not a viable thing, but I'm just saying it, was, it felt very weird that it was like... I was actually pretty really happy that she plugged that in because, yeah. because you know, because like she'd been sweeping everything for so long. I was, you know, I, I thought it was at least like spiced it up to, to at least take advantage of that Oscar that you so know is coming to you to really like say shit that matters. Yeah. Um, um, sorry, I'm just doing like little bullet points because I guess yeah. we're wrapping up. Um, the one thing pissed me off the most, Planet of the Apes, 
did not win for best visual effects. But Interstellar's wormhole sequence. But that's one sequence. That's like Planet of the Apes is like the whole idea of motion capture is integral to the entire movie, right? Like the what the reason that Andy Serkis is performance like, oh my god, get him an Oscar, is because the motion capture and the visual effects were so on point that, like, it made the characters come to life, I think. I mean, no, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, but, uh, but that worked also. I, I think, I mean, I, it wasn't even just that, I mean, you know, we got to watch Matthew McConaughey go into a black yeah. hole, that, that was, tidal that wave, really cool. and, and not even that, I, you know, I just, I just think, I just think what Interstellar's visuals managed to achieve in sense of, like, giving us a spectacle. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I mean, it, it, I feel it's, it's kind of cheating that I saw it in, like, 70 millimeter IMAX because I no, really I, got yeah, to, like, yeah. but, like, I, 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 like, felt genuine awe when yeah. I was watching it. I didn't check my watch. I'm a very yeah. cynical, like... Oh, yeah. Because we're cinema like, studies people, <laughs> so, I mean, we're horrible people. We've got nothing yeah. to look forward to of the world that awaits <laughs> us. We're cinema studies majors. Ooh, ringing endorsement. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess want to give, like, a final movie rating to the whole Oscars, like out of 10? Yeah. Out of 10? Um, I, I'd say I'd give it like a six and a half. All right, you know, yeah. not horrible, not, you know, not safe, boring in places, but not bored overall. Yeah, I'd give it a six. Because, because you know, it's kind of hard for me to also be bored with this thing. Because like, yeah. this is this is my Super Bowl. Yeah. The Oscars are my Super Bowl. Yeah. But yeah, I'd give, I would give it a six. I mean, it was very, Okay, it was very mad, um, but yeah, I'm glad J.K. Simmons won. I'm glad the people who I wanted to win at times won. But yeah, um, yeah, there you go. So, uh, Harry, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> and thank you guys for uh, sticking around, watching the long-awaited, incredible masterpiece that is the Film Talk Friday's Oscar special. And uh, see you guys next week when we talk Fridays on Mondays. Shit! <laughs> um, do you want to hear? Do you want to do the? Do you want to do the ending? The... Dude, do the ending. Do the ending. Do you want to do the ending? Wow, you're putting me on the spot. All right, I'll come back. I actually wanted you to do it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, another episode of Film Talk Fridays on Mondays. I'm Joe Katz. Very cool. Probably see him in another movie later on. Um, so yeah, join us again on Monday. We'll have another student. Filmmaker, um, make see a movie, all that stuff. Yeah, go see some movies in the meantime. So yeah, not American Sniper. Yeah, thank God. I think it's on its way out. Yeah. All right. Cool. Go see right. Kingsman. Go, right. go see that one. Yeah. That's okay. One see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>